background similar for those of you. I started as a girl guide and then realized that Polish scouting really um, stuck somehow. And there is a big field of outdoor education developed um, uh, over the border. So I want to stop scouting and ju jump more into outdoor education. From the, from the picture from the left, you can see me doing PhD. My PhD is about sailing and sailing is really a big part of adventure education. So I'm, I'm, I'm smiling to Tomek because I think it's a, it's a, very, nice, uh, it's a very nice path to follow. I also uh, put uh, the, the logo of the organization that are very inspiring. And I think you can find a lot of inspiration there. So the Adverbound, it, um, I, I was trained as a trainer by Adverbound and it's the biggest organization based on outdoor education now, even <clears throat> I think they're like in somehow uh, bigger than scouting in the, in the, in the uh, when we are talking about really adventure and outdoor education. So it's an international organization and they published a very powerful and great material. So almost everything that you can see with <clears throat> Adverbound logo, it's, it's really worth to go. Um, there's an, at Adverbound, it's, uh, the, the, the roots are British, and this is very important because in adventure and outdoor education, there's big discussion be between British and American, uh, let's say, networks, and somehow they are contradictory. So it's, it's important to understand, are you following British or uh, American, or at least be aware about it. So the second big organization is Project Adventure, and uh, I'm learning a lot from them. They are more into like simple formats, but also Project Adventure brings higher up courses to the to the outdoor and adventure education, and it's it, it's their big input to the to the current. I also strongly recommend you the network Experiential Educators Europe. This is uh, this is an informal network with a lot of conferences, and I I gain a lot from them. It's my must be point in the calendar. The international the the European conference of EEE. <coughs> I think it's the be the, the best conference uh, about experiential educa uh, education, and it's cheap. There is scholarship found there, so it's the access is quite easy. So. Uh, please consider to come because this is the big, for me, it was a big source of learning and ex, uh, ex, experience. Sail Training International, this is the, the, the big uh, organization that I belong to and my sailing crews are there. And of course, Erasmus Plus, a lot of us uh, meet outdoor education during the international project because outdoor education is very simple to implement and it's, it's very beneficial for this kind of project. So I also learned a lot from Erasmus, uh, Erasmus project and, and action. So th this is more or less my background, and this is uh, what I brings uh, here today. So I would like to start from the Da Vinci quote that I really like. As I already mentioned, I, I believe the theory is very, very important because it's in the, in the background of our practice and da vinci says that who loves practice without theory is like the sailor who boards a ship without the ruder like steering wheel and compass and never knows where he might cast um so it's it's really important to understand where we are and actually why you are using some kind of <clears throat> some kind of methods so we are starting from the umbrella so the umbrella of all those roots is experiential education and depends of who you ask they're they're explaining it differently like experiential education it's an umbrella and under this umbrella we have outdoor and adventure but if you ask somebody else they would say no outdoor is the the biggest umbrella and experiential education is under so we are starting from experiential education I believe that this is our umbrella and outdoor and adventure education and many other different um, currents really developed under this umbrella. I think the basic uh, ideas of experiential education, you probably know the CULP cycle, learning from experience, uh, transferring the knowledge, uh, debriefing as a method to help people gain from the <clears throat> concrete experience to the um, or ordinary life. This is the this is the 
the, the gift that we have from the experimental uh, experimental education and you will see the echo the shadows of this concept in adventure education of course uh, because experimental education was the the mother of uh, all different currents around so the the i, I put a definition for experimental education uh, you probably know it, but just to have it uh, also for the recording. Um, of course, as like, you know, the definitions are, are really hard because if we want to make it really um, straight to the point, it, it's never sharp. So, so we will see that, uh, that, uh, that there is no the concrete definition of experimental education and adventure education too. However, this is the, the mother, and we have to remember that experimental education, it's a, it's a basic for the, for the adventure education. And it's not so obvious because sometimes if you go for the, for example, high rope adventure park, and uh, you, so you have the experience that can be treated as a adventure education. However, by the method, how they treat you as a, let's say student there, or uh, in the way how they can give you the technical information how to go through the challenge it could be experimental education or, or not at all so it's important not to forget uh, forget about it so i put a, a, a original first let's say model where is adventure education in all those discussion it's a model reprinted from simon priest this is the character that i would mention today uh, um, again this is let's say american um, american approach and they said that the outdoor education it's a it's a main current and adventure education is a part of outdoor education and it's not some the same as um, environmental education so in this um, in this approach the outdoor education it's the it's the it's the mother and adventure education it's 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 something smaller than um than outdoor uh, however there are different math uh, different models this is a little bit uh older i will go through fast and oh no oh yes so this model actually uh, i i prefer uh, it, it, the name of the model is a model of outdoor education, so adventure education is again inside. So the, the biggest thing is the direct experience. This is, as I mentioned, experiential education approach. Yeah? So everything is surrounded by direct experience and depends on where you are in this model, you call it differently. So we have the big group of physical skills like um, also recreation like really canoeing uh, hiking sailing this is here we have the the bubble of interpersonal growth and you already probably know it you use it that outdoor education is a tool for something so this is something as an interpersonal growth is uh, it's just like a second bubble and uh, of course there's kind of nature relationship relationship with nature and it's a it's a it's a third one and and the question is where are you in this in this model if you are more between physical skills and interpersonal grow gibbelson who creates this model says okay you are in adventure education if you are between physical skills and nature like for example going for a hike to tatra mountains with your friends this is more tourism and recreation yeah and if you are between nature and interpersonal grow you are more into environmental education and outdoor education in the in understanding learning outside the classroom yeah so you are just learning about nature but also of course develop your interpersonal skills so this this feature point where is out adventure education and this is important to understand that adventure education is, is um, closer to the physical skills. And if people ask me to, uh, to explain the difference between outdoor and adventure education in one sentence, I would say adventure education is more into physical skills 
and it's less into groups, group and group development. So adventure education could be focused more or smaller group, your own development. Outdoor education is really more about group as a mirror for you. It would be maybe not one sentence explanation, but but uh, but as a as a summary. So it's still very complicated. <laughs> uh, what is important to understand that environmental education it's not the same as outdoor education it's not the same as adventure education and it's not the same as erlignes pedagogic we don't have uh, german trainers here as i as, uh, as i believe however erlignes pedagogic is a big current uh, also very very well known and contribute to to outdoor outdoor education so so I um, invite you to try to uh, be aware of what we are talking about, because it's very easy to mix outdoor and adventure education and environmental education. But if we really want to understand what we are doing, it's important to somehow put those border, borders, even if they are not sharp. I'm sorry, <laughs> but they are not, of course. So um, it's easier to for me it's sometimes easier to to explain it on the practice so actually this is environmental education and why if you have to guess why you would say okay why i choose this picture as a representative of environmental education keep the question but there was also one clarification question for the graph before from bostian where is the outdoor education there uh okay so outdoor uh, so i will go back the whole bubble is outdoor education so in the gibbertson perspective yeah it's the name of the model is a model of outdoor education so outdoor education has inside those three now we said four because there's adventure therapy developed so there are like those four parts in the outdoor education um so yeah so what is that if you have to guess environmental outdoor adventure environmental yeah, environmental yeah and why outdoor anyway of course <laughs> everything is more or less outside of the building in this uh, in this current why you think it's it's environmental it's because something they with are nature more like spectators they are not actively like building yeah something. yeah so there is like kind of feature of teacher of course we don't know maybe it's an uncle with siblings yeah but like we assume that this is kind of teacher he's pointing something the group is learning they have the the, the oh how is lupa in english uh Tomek. magnifying Tomek. glass <laughs> yeah thank you <laughs> so yes yeah, so they, they, they're learning yes yeah? so so the the purpose of environmental education is to help people understand how the nature works so it's more close to the formal education it's more about uh, biology phys physics chemistry this is more environmental education but of course doing outside okay this is outdoor education um so you can see there's a there's a group uh they're playing something actually it's a low rope course uh it's not so easy who is who in this uh in this picture they're outside they're playing with themselves so for me this is the and yeah and and we can see that they're holding each other you can see that see the hands that they're holding quite strong it means that they're looking for balance so it's not so easy activity so for me this is the i would say okay this is the picture of outdoor education this is adventure education so in adventure education the level of risk is higher than in outdoor education it's more about personal development than group development so you as a person are, are developing through taking conscious risk in nature. But it's not always that you need a group to mirror you. You can reflect on yourself. So we can say that in outdoor education, it's 
there's kayaking and in outdoor education in adventure education it's rafting it would be my explanation for uh, for that so um so this is the this is adventure um and then there is a, a, a big new current developed in the beginning of like international in the beginning of two thousand years. It's uh, it's adventure therapy. Uh, adventure therapy, um, of course, they're taking a lot from outdoor education. So most of the projects are based on expedition settings. Uh, however, the goal is different. So it's not really, and but but it, it doesn't have to be therapy as a really you know psychotherapy. It could be, uh, but it's rare. Um, in Polish, would say social therapy. It's it's somehow of co correcting uh, behavior or supporting youngsters who are somehow out of the system to develop their own basic personal skills and social skills. Through through expeditions, this is the the, the most uh, the biggest field of uh, of um, of uh, adventure therapy now. So um, yeah, if I want to make a sim simple model, I would say that. So you have three factors: group, yourself, and nature. The the developing factor it's a risk. So in every in every of this current, we are talking about taking conscious risk because risk is a factor to help us develop. And, and around those three bubbles, you have adventure therapy, adventure education, other education. And this is more British understanding. So in American understanding, we would say, okay, adventure education, it's a part of outdoor, from my practice, from European practice, which is a little bit more British, I would say, okay, there is outdoor, there is adventure, they are connected, but they are not the same. And it's hard to say that one is part of another. So they are somehow in a in a dialogue. Okay, uh, is it make it anything clear <laughs> or not yet? <laughs> I'm checking with you. There's one question in chat and then maybe Eric would have a question. So still a question from Alenka about this high ropes park. Okay. Why, if I understand the question well, why this should be experiential education? Ah, okay. So um, there are different types of experience uh, in advent in high rope course. So if you are going there for your for some goals, educational goals, you are working with we are working with a trainer by experimental education methods. It means uh, that there is experience, there is reflection, and there is transfer. Then you are more in experimental education. And this is very popular approach in Belgium, in Czech Republic, in Germany. Um, actually, the high rope course starts not from fun, from recreational activity, but starts from personal development activity. There are high rope courses that you are going with a group, for example, Jacob's Ladder. Maybe you know Jacob's Ladder. This is a very um, traditional high rope uh, element that you are climbing the big ladder and it's not possible to climb it alone. You need your friends on the ladder and you need your friends belaying you. So it's an activity for a group of six or eight. This is experimental education. This is adventure education because there is a purpose, there is a goal, there is reflection, there is a trainer. If you're go just going to adventure park with your friends, you, you are going there to have fun outside. And of course, the, the tools are the same. So there is a risk there. You have to cross your limits. You have to um, assess your safety, all the stuff, but without reflection, uh, without the briefing, uh, without the the goal, it's just it's it's closed to just recreation, physical activity, that actually learning. So in experimental education, we are saying that that there is somebody creates an educational goal for us. It could be us. 
if you are reflecting, it could be teacher, it could be trainer, it could be our partner, but there is a goal. The, the, exper the um, experience is educative, says John Dewey. But we have also the experience that could be miseducative. For example, smoking weeds next to the river. It's outdoor, it's in the group, there is risk inside. It could be reflection <laughs> and the briefing, but we would not call it outdoor education and experimental education because this, this experience is, let's say, miseducative somehow than educative, yeah? Um, okay, there were one more question. Uh, you mentioned Tomek? Oh, Vitali, yeah. Um, there, was, there was Yarik who wanted to ask the question, mm -hmm. okay. and then we go for Vitali, yes. Okay, okay thank you. Um, yeah, I was <clears throat> the first time I started to think uh, really like specifically the difference between this, uh, what you said is thank you for so the outdoor and uh, um, outdoor education and uh, uh, adventure education. Would it be helpful uh, if I try to explain this to myself like that? Adventure education has more space of options that you can take. And this builds your experience. So the space of variations for you is bigger. In outdoor education, it's more uh, like channeled. You just know like several outcomes, you fail or you do, and that's it. In adventure, you take more initiative and there can be more creativity, more space for different stuff. Is it the features of uh, difference between how I understand this? Yeah, then, yeah, I think it's it's a quite advanced <laughs> understanding, but I, I agree with that. In adventure education, the, the area of uncertain is bigger. Mm. Of course, we are we are working over adventure, and adventure could be somehow planned, but there also happened. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, yes, in yes. outdoor education, we, we are we are saying, okay, uh, we somehow plan it. Yeah, so yes, we are yes. we are taking our group for the hiking and we know the rules. We have we have done the risk assessment, we collect equipment. Of course, there's always something could happen on the trail, but we somehow you know assess it, we somehow plan it. In adventure education, uh, this level, this area of uncertain, unknown is it could be bigger because it's usually it's more physical. Um, uh, risk inside yeah if you are going for it's it's like you're going for hiking or you're going from climbing yeah so climbing is a little bit more danger than just hiking but as i mentioned unfortunately there's there are no sharp definition yeah uh th this is the, the the order that i create for myself based on the british um approach because for me it's useful to 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 to, to create to understand I'm going more in outdoor education or I'm going more in adventure education and with all those consequences. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, I, I want to ask you related to the last slide because mm -hmm. your short um, yeah. it was around the risk. Yeah. And then the question is risk or challenge? And at least from my perspective, the question was, is related to the challenge and learning aspects in outdoor experiential learning, or it's only about the vocabulary and understanding of the meaning of the risk? Yeah, the question is uh, how you understand challenge and how you understand risk. Um, I think you can take a challenge that it's not risky. Uh, I don't know if you can, could take a risk that it's not a challenge. I just have to think about it, but like in no, the tea, just to in, make me clear, uh, clear in the question, yeah, because I'm, I totally agree with you that challenge not always is directed to the risk, mm -hmm. it's directed to the taking out of the comfort zone and to learning elements. Mm -hmm. Risk is just putting people into the dangerous situation. Let's claim this mountain, mm -hmm. but the mountain without reflecting how it brings me to the mm -hmm. I mean, my learning but, outcomes is just a risk. But there are different type of risks. So in outdoor education, we are taking is talking about physical risk, emotional risk, social risk. Yeah. So there are different type of risks. And it's just this is kind of came from from theory, and I will show you when we jump to the models that the 
the risk it's a uh, it, it's something that that make you um, higher in this concept yeah so it has to be somehow of risk uh, in the activity if we want people to develop uh, based on this theory yeah so it's uh, it, it's it's about taking a, a risk not always taking about only a challenge yeah mm, and it's not about taking people to the danger, but invite them to take a risk. But of course, it's kind of linguistic discussion, but I would say like risk, it's, it, it is the factor, yeah? So we, are, we have a lot of tools uh, to measure the level of risk, how, what, what level of risk is fruitful for our participants to grow, yeah? Um, this is, why I, I'm I'm more into risk because I don't know any tool to measure challenge, <laughs> but I know a lot of tools to measure a risk. Um, okay, so I will finish this. Can part. I ask you a question? Uh, okay, yeah. If we have a minute. I yeah. One is a question of two elements. One, I was thinking you mentioned si sailing. We used to use environments like working in the trains, uh, working on the cruiser boats. But I, I suppose this could be considered as outdoor, but I still keep it as a question. Is this outdoor or not? Because in principle, it has roof and walls. So it's mm. in a way physically indoor. But the second thing is if you think of a group of people playing a role-playing game, sitting in a circle, you know, so mm -hmm. physically there is practically nothing happening, mm -hmm. but there's, I suppose, a lot of adventure, but it, mm -hmm. everything happens in imagination. Mm -hmm. How would you place it? So, uh, so um, in the theory of outdoor and adventure um, concept, we are saying, okay, try to be outdoor. So of course, you know, games coming from outdoor education that you can play indoor. Yeah, of course you can. Uh, however, like going outside with all the benefits and use the nature as a facilitation of the process is a, is a rule of thumb of this concept. So I would say we use in our organization a lot of role plays and LARPs, but I would say that it's more experiential education because we are using the same tools, but it's not really outside, yeah? So we are not using benefits from nature, even those physical benefits, yeah? You know that if you're uh, walking on the grass for 10 minutes, your high, uh, your blood pressure is raising down, yeah? So there are like really medicine-based evidence saying, showing the benefits of going outdoor, and you are not using it when you're playing uh, RPG. So it's more experimental education, but we, we use it a lot. And I think it's very powerful too. About sailing, uh, I would say, of course, it's outdoor, maybe not a cruiser, you know? <laughs> I, I'm more thinking about sailing boats, uh, yachts, yeah, um, tall ships, because you are so depends from the nature. I don't know if you ever sail, but you know, even if you're inside and you're rolling and smashing the, <laughs> The, the walls you can feel the power of nature so the those you are so out of the comfort comfort zone and you are so out of the uh, regular let's say surroundings that this walls and floors mean, means completely something different than in a training room so um uh, but but yeah we we says that sail training as a as a educational approach for sailing it's a big part of adventure education so it's there and then I want to show you some inspiring people um, from outdoor and adventure education areas that I think it's really worth to follow. Um, and I want to start from the from the um, from the character that it's not really well known, at least in Poland, I think um, it's Kurt Hahn. And I want to I want to say you more about Kurt Hahn because if we really go through his ideas you will see that uh, actually he set a fundament for outdoor and adventure education and i think it's super super interesting to follow kurt Hahn and to really understand his ideas because it's extremely fresh even if it's uh, almost a century years old so um so kurt Hahn is the founder of erlebnis pedagogic 
uh, as I told you, in in the in in Europe, we are translating a Leibniz pedagogic as an outdoor education. However, if you go to Germany, and if you start to work with German trainers, you will see that they understand it a little bit different. And it's really into language, so for me, it's hard to explain it. However, it's a little bit different. Um, but you can see the reflection of it in adverbound uh, organization as a as a concept, as a fundament of, of ad adverbound. And what's super interesting that Kurt Hahn, um, Kurt Hahn diagnoses six declines of modern youth. Uh, it's it's uh, um, now that the language and the concept could be a little bit vintage, let's say. However, I found it uh, really still, um, still fresh and inspiring for my work. And so he starts from kind of diagnosis that modern youth are missing some stuff because of the modern world. And it's just uh, like, it's a fitness, but it's also awareness. It's about lack of skills because the, like craft skills, because the, the life starts to be uh, too much convenient. Um, the lack of self-discipline, uh, <coughs> they face a lot of fear because the modern world is changing so fast and it was 100 years ago, so almost. So, so still uh, sounds very fresh. Uh, and based on the six, uh, six lack, six decline, he proposed something as he called social therapy through adventure. Um, so the, the, the previous concept of um, of outdoor education in Kurt Han understanding was actually to fix society. Um, and those solutions are, there are four solutions, fitness training, organizing expeditions, doing projects and voluntary service. Uh, he called it rescue service, but now it's voluntary service. And actually those four milestones are still, um, are, are still, um, present in adverbound projects and it all, in almost all adverbound projects you can see reflections of those four solutions those four medicines that Kurt Hahn uh, designed uh, and Kurt Hahn um, starts from formal education so it's interesting if you want to somehow study how we can implement outdoor education approach in formal education so it's, it's a nice source to follow because he set a, a, a network of schools um, all around the world, and he was trying to implement uh, this attitude in formal education, then adverbound take it out somehow <laughs> to, uh, to um, non-formal education. However, there are countries, and I think it's in Slovenia, uh, then, then there is an agreement between Ministry of Education and uh, the local adverbound that like every every school um, has in curriculum expedition run by adverbound. So there are some uh, some connections. However, I, but I it's, can I say it's yeah. still uh, voluntarily. I mean, I know a lot of schools and there's really wide network, but it's still voluntary. Okay. Okay, but I know that there are some countries that the connection is really, uh, um, really strong. However, now Adverbound operates more in in non formal education, even in some countries switch to business and starts to be a training company for for adults. However, this this idea that actually by by doing outdoor education um, training, you can heal society. Um, for me, it's very inspiring, and uh, and it's very nice uh, to see when in other other projects you can you always has this voluntary service, and if even if you are doing Erasmus project with them and going for five days, there is always at least half a day or a day of voluntary service, usually for local communities, and it's really strong and powerful, and this is something that I feel that we somehow miss. And if we reflect about it, we can come back and and um, and and really start to 
bring it uh, again to, to our projects. And in Adverbound, you will find a lot of nice resources and ideas how to implement um, voluntary service for local communities in uh, outdoor education projects. And it doesn't have to be big, but even I experiment a lot in, on our Erasmus project in that, and even a small thing really changed mindset of people. So I encourage you to use it. A lot and now you can see this is the adverbound model uh, of uh, how they are work and if you see those elements skill building teamwork reflection mastery character leadership and service it's really reflection of Kurt Han concept so and and they're using a lot also adventure uh, education for example adverbound organized expedition like you know for a month it's not a hiking for five days. Sometimes it's a month on the desert or they're building crafts and going through wild Canada rivers. So they're, they're, they're really doing a big expedition, not only uh, running the, the small program, but also a big one. And there are a lot of sailing <laughs> in Adverbound. And this is why I really like them. Yeah, Tomek, <laughs> it's a good source of inspiration. Um, so yeah, I think Kurtan, it's, it's really worth to follow. There is, a, I know the Polish book and there's a German version. I didn't find, a, I didn't find a, a English one, but I, uh, I believe there, there is one. It's a Werner Michel, a Liebnis Pedagogic. It's a 80 pages. And this is like a Kurtan in a, um, in a small pile and I strong, strongly recommend to, to go, go and follow because it's really, it's really amazing how in simple way he explained all those concepts of cope cycle and transfer of learning and he all, uh, he, he really used it all, um, however, in different words. Um, and he was really uh, in cooperation with Baden Powell when the scouting was development. So you can see a lot of uh, developed, you can see a lot of um, reflection in those two movements. Um, second person that I think it's really worth to follow is Karl Ronka. Uh, unfortunately died uh, not, not, not so long time ago. Uh, this guy found Project Adventure a big organization uh, in United States. And, um, and he's, as, as I mentioned, he's uh, author of the concept of higher, using higher up courses in adventure education programs, because before Karolonka, it was, it was usually used for military training, but he made it popular. Um, he even uh, set a, a, a big, uh, like generation project in United States that they were building higher up courses in every district of United States. So you can even imagine how big it was. Um, and he's also an author of uh, a Stroge Zone Experience model. And I think I'm very proud of it because you know the comfort zone starts to be so popular in all those coaching, new age, Instagram, blah, 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 blah. And this is the this is the concept coming from Karl Ronka. And if you Google Karl Ronka, the stretch, stretch zone experience model, this is the source of this concept. Of course, there's a big critique about it now. Um, there are some articles uh, really in, in in a big discussion for this concept. However, we use it a lot, and it's. It's like in a cold cycle, you know, it's good to check a source. <laughs> so not Google the nice graphic from the, from the website and understand the, the concept, but it's, it's, it's quite strong, uh, strong concept, uh, giving steps and a lot of guidelines, how to use it, uh, by it uh, made by Karl Lonke. And what is super, super nice about him that he was really into fun. You know, so if I would say that Kurt Han was more about those um, those uh, therapy, social therapy, and if you follow Kurt Han's school, it was really tough, you know, and he was really, let's say, um, mm, yeah, he was. Oh. I, I lost a word. He was really like more into those therapy and we have to heal the society, blah, blah, blah. And Karl Lanka says, 
let's have fun. And he wrote like 20 books of silly games and activities with low rope and high rope. They're actually very, very nice. And the educational outcome could be very strong, but it's so much fun. And uh, so it's really nice to follow. You can find on Amazon his book for really cheap prices. And it's worth to, worth to check because it's a nice source of games and, and activities. And uh, yeah, and, but, it, but it's very American. You probably know the game with throwing the rubber chickens. <laughs> this is Karolonka game. Uh, for first time when I saw it, it's super stupid. However, uh, it could be fun and and he he brings this fun factor and i like it uh, uh very much because sometimes we are too how is povajne in english serious serious thank you i was looking for this word so sometimes we are so serious in our programs and karlanka says okay but if you want youngsters to work with you let's have fun with them uh, so simple, but so 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 powerful. So Karolonka, American approach, project adventure and high rope courses. This is the uh, reference that we're supposed to have with this guy. And there is Simon Priest, uh, happily alive. Um, and he's also American. And actually he's kind of the father of adventure education because he published a first book about it in 1990. Uh, I have it. It's like a Bible. Um, and uh, he brings a lot to, uh, to adventure education from theory perspective. And also he challenged physical activity. I mean, he created a lot of models related to physical activity and somehow shake the um, the, the physical activity community let's say let's make it let's you can make education from your climbing don't teach people only techniques teach them more because you have tools and um and he creates a, a adventure education paradigm which is one of my uh favorite model and i will show you because it's very, I think it's very useful. So he's still alive. You can Google his website. He looks like so 90s. I was, I, I thought that it was hacked when I saw it for the first time because it's, <laughs> it looks like your homework from primary school. However, it's really nice to go through because you can find a lot of nice resources um, in his in his website. Um, and this is uh, adventure uh, experience paradigm. I think it's very powerful if we understand it and I use it a lot and I believe it could be useful for you even if you're doing very small outdoor education, outdoor adventure education activities. So he said that there's like two dimension, there is risk and there is competences and you can see that there is kind of curve on it. So if the risk is very high and the competence is low, it's a competence of participants, you have disaster. <laughs> then you have misadventure and you have peak of adventure. At peak of adventure, it's a, it's a, let's say, space when the learning is the biggest and the personal growth is the biggest. So, um, so, and and he made a lot of psychological research for it. So it's really detailed spot uh, with a clear framework when you can say, okay, we want our program there because in peak of, the, peak of adventure, the output is the biggest. So if the risk is very small, we have adventure. Um, and if the risk is almost uh, zero, uh, we have exploration and experimentation. And what's very important, it could be bored. Uh, boredom. So it's it's really important to to try to work over this dimension. And he then he made a study on climbing, and then transferred to the other activities. That actually, we are on this two dimensions. So if you have the the red one, uh, it's a per perceived risk. And I, I'm coming back to our uh, discussion about danger and risk. So, for example, you can think about uh, going for the high rope courses, yeah? So perceived uh, risk um, could be very, very big. However, actually it's really uh, low. 
So higher up courses, it's more safety than, um, than lower up courses. But people find higher up courses much, much danger um, than lower up. And we are working on those two dimensions. Yes, yeah? so we are looking for the, for, for, the, for the activities that our participants think it's, uh, you, you, you need a lot of risks. However, we know that actually it's safer than, they, than their perspective. Then you are on the peak of adventure. However, if you find something which is very risky and the competence of your participants is very low, so for example, you're going for hiking uh, in the mountains in the winter with no training, your participants could think that it's actually, it's nothing, but without no training, the risk uh, of danger and, and even damage uh, or death could be high. So we are looking at the moment to balance uh, perceived risk with the, with the real risk. So this is the adventure experiment experience paradigm, experience paradigm. And you can find a lot of uh, var var variants of this chart that, okay, what to do if your participants uh, has low competences, but you want to make risk very high, blah, blah, blah. There are st steps that you can uh, that you can use. I can see that there is something on the chat. So I'm checking with you, Tomek. Is there any questions that um, that uh, we have? Not, but not that much questions, a bit of jokes and a bit of okay. uh, and a comment uh, uh, okay. on the flow model. I don't know, Vera, if you want to add something. Yeah, more. for me, it feels like that the, this last model you showed about the peak adventure it pretty much copies the flow model, but more with the lens of our education, isn't it? Uh, like yeah. this, no? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Simon Priest referred to Saikashvili directly. Uh, so flow model contributes uh, contributes a lot. We have also the the model of wave of, of adventure, and you can also see this model in the in the paradigm. So yeah, this the, those uh, uh, those references are, are are clear. That's true, but it's more about we have this uh, this factor of physical risk in Simon Priest work, which is different than uh, than Saikashvili, yeah, uh, not Saikashvili. Um, yeah, the author of the of the flow model. Uh, okay, so um, so um, we are going to the end. So I want to finish with actually definition of the adventure education. If you want to have it, uh, we can say that it's a variety of teaching and learning activities. So you know that it's not a clear clear bucket of, of tools, it's a variety, and experience usually involving close interaction with the outdoor natural setting. So usually, but not always, um, and contain elements of real or perceived danger or risk in which the outcome, although uncertain, can be influenced by the actions of the participants and the circumstances. So this is the, the definition that I think it's it's more uh, the, the most recognizable. Uh, what we miss here is the role of trainer and participants. In adventure education, there is no so much focus on it. There is big focus on it in outdoor education. So if you're looking for some sources about how to be a trainer and trainer facilitator, it's more in outdoor education. Uh, because then the, the, the power that the trainer has is bigger than in adventure education. Um, but yeah, this is the, the, the frame, this is the definition that I like to use. And I think it more or less um, gives uh, every, every, like mention every important thing that we are uh, talking about outdoor education. Um, and in the end, I, I would like to, um, I would like to share with you two very good resources. So, uh, so if you um, if you could go for only one book <laughs> because your time is limited, uh, please go for this one. It's uh, Education and Learning Through Outdoor Activities by uh, Jan Neumann. It's a Czech author, 
a British attitude, but for me, it's like a Bible. I think this book is really enough to be a very good outdoor education trainer. You will find a lot of theories there, but also a lot of activities uh, with the briefing techniques uh, and all those stuff. And if you want to go more and check the American uh, attitude, it's adventure theory, um, theory and application by Project Adventure. As I mentioned, this uh, American organization by Human Kinetics a publisher. By Human Kin Kinetics, you have a lot of books uh, that could be could be useful, and uh, I strongly recommend it. But if you have time to go for one, <laughs> go for Neumann because it's a it's a bible for outdoor education trainers. So now we are almost out of time. So I'm checking if there is there anything that you want to discuss or mention or ask can you please write this uh, you know yeah uh, yeah uh, name and author please yes do uh, okay so i will do it now fast um that you will have it it's a uh, it's uh, education education This book is really hard to find, um, but sometimes on Amazon you can have it. Or, and the second one, it's Adventure Education Theory and Application by Dick Prouty and Panucci. So this is also a very, very nice one. In the, in the adventure education, you will find more philosophy. You'll find a relation between outdoor education, phys um, psychology concepts. So it's more theoretical. However, with a lot of nice, uh, nice examples of activities, there's a big chapter about the briefing and facilitation, which I think is very important in outdoor activity. In Neumann, there is more just games and ideas how to use it with a little bit of comment with uh, fr from theory part so but but if you go through those books the concepts are more or less uh, the same they just use different names for that because one is more american and second one is more british I uh, wanted to add also, uh, maybe Agnieszka, you are uh, the shy one <laughs> to say about it, but the, one of the books which uh, actually is a nice handbook is the one I think you have uh, quite a few articles in this outdoor education from theory to practice. Yes. It's a very nice uh, handbook. I personally used it and I find it very useful. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It's so sometimes it's uh, it's for it's easy to forget about yourself. Yeah, we have a big pro, pro project outdoor academy in our organization, and we published two books in they're in Creative Commons license, so you can find it on the on the web. It's outdoor education uh, from theory to practice. This is the first one. Uh, outdoor academy, uh, outdoor education from theory uh, and practice, and second one is uh, is about activities because we create a six months uh, program. So in first one there is a theory, in the second one there are activities um, divided by weeks, and uh, there is a source of a lot of uh, ideas there. Yeah, thank you for that. <laughs>